Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a 2011 American sci-fi action film called Source Code. The plot revolves around Coulter Stevens, a captain in the US Army who's sent into an 8-minute digital simulation of a real-life train explosion with the mission of identifying who bombed it. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens with an unconscious man in a train moving towards Chicago. Coulter Stevens, an army pilot, awakens on the train and is unsure of his location. Christina introduces herself and addresses him as Sean. He ignores the conductor when he asks for his ticket because he's too busy analyzing the train for some sense. When Christina tries to assist Coulter in finding his ticket, he becomes disoriented with her as well. Coulter replies that he has no idea who she is when she asks him why he's acting so strangely. He stands up and briefly exits the train in an effort to locate himself before returning to the seat next to Christina. Suddenly, he notices a different face in the window's reflection of himself. While using the restroom, Coulter examines himself in the mirror. He checks his ID after noticing someone entirely different and opens the wallet to discover the same person. In front of the restroom, Christina is waiting for him. She hears him say that he doesn't know either her or Sean. As he tries to walk away, the train suddenly explodes and Coulter awakens in a new location. In a dark cockpit, Coulter slowly gains his consciousness, hearing a woman's voice asking if he's still functional. He's still baffled and unable to respond to any of the questions being asked by the inaudible voices. Colleen Goodwin, an Air Force captain, asks what truly happened on the train when the explosion occurred. When Coulter inquires about her identity, she appears in a video screen in front of him and tells Coulter that he already knows who she is. She tells him that they will rebuild his memory pattern and begins a procedure to reestablish his memories. As Goodwin continues the exercise, he suddenly recalls certain details and speaks them back to Goodwin. Coulter calls her Goodwin after she asks for her name. On the monitor, Dr. Rutledge briefly appears to check something. Goodwin interrupts Coulter as he wants to speak to his father, and she continues to ask about the bomb on the train and keeps investigating the subject. He doesn't know who detonated the train, so Goodwin tells him he will return inside for another eight minutes. Coulter believes it's part of a simulation, but Goodwin won't tell him anything about it. She simply insists that he learn more about the train and that his true mission is to locate the bomb and the bomber. Coulter is back on the train with Christine while she talks about her notice at work and about taking the LSAT. A woman spills coffee in the shoe and he hears the opening of a soda can. Coulter makes a statement that it's the same train but somehow different, which Christina understands to be a deep remark. Coulter sets his watch's timer, telling how realistic everything appears. Coulter scans the area for a potential bomber while remaining convinced he's inside a simulation and jumps over to a man thinking he's suspicious. He's told by Christina that he's a comedian. In search for something unusual on the train, he notices a student returning some of their wallet. Coulter returns to the train after realizing that the explosion came from behind and enters the restroom to take a look. Coulter opens the air vent after noticing that it has been tampered with. When he finally locates the bomb, he starts speaking to Goodwin, believing that she can hear him, and waits for her to give him instructions on what to do next. Coulter decides to leave the bomb in the same condition in which he discovered it. He comes up with a new plan for locating the bomber. Then, pretending to be a security guard, he gets back into the cart and tells everyone to stop using all of their electronic devices because there has been a security breach. No one really believes him, so he closes a man's laptop when he doesn't stop using it. Coulter breaks the man's jaw as a result, causing chaos throughout the cart. Coulter tells Christina not to worry because neither he nor she is real as she runs over to the man to assist him. The bomb detonates and he's once more in his cockpit. Goodwin advises him to calm down. When she asks if he found the bomb, he says yes. Coulter requests to speak with Dr. Rutledge after understanding that he is her commanding officer. Coulter believes he was in Afghanistan just two days ago, but Goodwin claims it was two months ago. Still baffled, she tells him that he's not in a simulation and that real people's lives are at stake. Coulter wants to know more before continuing with the mission. So Goodwin approaches Dr. Rutledge and asks if she can tell him anything. When he confirms that she can, Goodwin informs Coulter that the train he was on earlier that morning had already exploded and that more attacks like that are underway. He still doesn't understand why he's resembling Sean, but Goodwin keeps pressing for answers. Coulter tells her where he discovered the bomb and what type of detonator it used. According to Goodwill, the detonation was timed to coincide with a freight train passing by. She believes the bomber was close enough to see when that would occur in order to detonate the bomb. She tells him to focus on the passengers on this train and to complete only the task that has been assigned to him. They reassign him to the train in the middle of the same conversation. The woman spills. Christina is unfazed by the coffee in her shoes. Coulter remarks that he now believes she's real. When the conductor requests his ticket, Coulter inquires about the behavior of the other passengers on the train, to which the man replies that he's the odd one. 
Then he asks Christina if she sees anything suspicious, and she makes jokes about everyone in the cart. Suddenly, Coulter notices a man exiting the restaurant. Christina informs him that he's the only other person she has seen come out of there, causing him to pause for a moment. Coulter goes through Sean's belongings but finds nothing noteworthy in the notebook. Outside the station, he and Christina pursue the man. Coulter follows the man into the restroom where he finds him sick in a stall. The man notices Coulter following him and feels uncomfortable. The man walks away, but Coulter approaches him on a bench and asks to borrow his phone. The guy is irritated by Coulter's advances, which raises his suspicions even more. Coulter tries desperately to see his phone when the bomb explodes, and he suspects that the man is the bomber. When the man pushes Coulter onto the tracks and an incoming train crushes him, Coulter tries to grab his briefcase. He slowly gains consciousness to find the surroundings to be extremely cold. As Stevens reawakens, the capsule's power supply fails. After barely fixing his supply, he claims to have saved Christina, but Goodwin explains that she was only saved within the source code. According to Rutledge, the source code is an experimental machine that reconstructs the past using the dead passenger's collective memories of the eight minutes preceding their deaths. As a result, the only thing that matters is locating the bomber and preventing a second real attack in Chicago. Dr. Rutledge explains what he's seeing in a kind of parallel reality through the eyes of Sean Fentress, who's his link. When Coulter still insists on saving Christina, Goodwin confirms that Christina died that morning on the train. At this time, Coulter sees news about the city being evacuated. Goodwin tells Coulter about a handgun and authorizes Coulter to use any measures necessary to find the bomber. While trying to retrieve the handgun, Coulter gets caught by the guards and the bomb detonates once again. When he wakes up, he asks Goodwin for more information and tells her that he can't succeed as he doesn't understand the process. She shows him a jacket with a military patch and tells him that she has never been on the other side of the source code. When sent back, Coulter draws the military patch and tells his real name to be a friend to Christina. He asks her to search for more information about that person. He also notices a man talking on a phone and searches through his bag but finds nothing. He finds a woman with an army medical bag and asks her what that military patch means. She says it's part of the Navy force. Coulter learns from Christina that he was reported as killed in action two months ago. He sees some flashbacks about Afghanistan and soon wakes up in his cockpit. He confronts Goodwin, who reveals that he's missing the majority of his body and is on life support with neural sensors attached. His mind created the capsule and his healthy body as manifestations to make sense of the environment. Coulter is enraged by his confinement. He says that dying once for his country is more than enough to show his loyalty. Rutledge plays a voice recording of Coulter's father, and this manages to calm Coulter. He eventually accepts Rutledge's offer when he promised to terminate him after the mission. As Coulter gets back to the train, he finds a phone in the bomb. When he calls the number, he finds a man talking on the phone. That man swears he was talking to his wife, so Coulter calls again and finds another man receiving the call outside of the train. As he follows the man, he notices him putting his wallet in the train and Coulter identifies the bomber as a nihilistic domestic terrorist named Derek Frost. Coulter has Frost's driver's license and vehicle registration plates memorized. As Coulter follows him, the door is closed, so he manages to open the door and jump off the speeding train. He follows Frost and shows him the phone from the bomb. Frost pretends to not know anything, but Coulter holds him on gunpoint and discovers another bomb inside Frost's van. When Coulter confronts him about his next target, Christina shows up and both are shot by Frost. Still breathing, Coulter learns the true motive behind Frost's crimes. When he wakes up, he relays his knowledge to Goodwin, assisting the police in apprehending Frost and preventing the second attack. Coulter is congratulated on successfully completing his mission. Rutledge secretly breaks his promise to let Coulter die. It turns out that he's the only candidate who can enter the source code. Goodwin, who's more sympathetic to Coulter's requests about saving the people on the train, sends him back one last time and promises to turn off his life support after eight minutes. This time, he arranges a date with Christina, defuses the bomb, apprehends Frost, and reports him to the authorities. He calls his father and reconciles with him before sending Goodwin an email. When his time is about to end, he asks Christina what would she do if she had a minute left to live. Christina says she would make every second count and the two kiss romantically. Meanwhile, Rutledge tries to stop Goodwin who is in the chamber for Coulter. Goodwin turns off Stephen's life support after eight minutes. The guards enter the room only to find Coulter's lifeless half-body. Back at the train, the roll around Coulter continues to move past the eight-minute mark. Coulter confirms his suspicion that source code is more than just a simulation. It is a machine that allows him to create alternate timelines. He and Christina get off the train and go on a date. The explosion never happens and the bomber is caught. 
Goodwin receives Steven's message in the same reality. He informs her of Source Code's true capabilities and requests her assistance in assisting the alternate reality version of himself. As he and Christina are on the date, he realizes the visions he saw were from this new future he made possible. And that's all about this movie. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more series recaps like this. Thanks for watching.